Institute of Language Studies and Research, Prodito Prothom, Shuniti Kumar Chatterjee, Memorial Lecture, Onushtani, Pukustit Shakotis, Shastra Do, of Adhari Shakotisani. Amra, Amada Shathayaske Pehechi, Odhapak, Gayatri Chakrabortis Vibakke, Mananiyo Mantri, Kichukhul Pari, Ashwin, আমি দেশে আমরা আমাদের অনুষ্ঠানের কাজ শুরু করে দেব আমি প্রথমেই অনুরোধ করব অধ্যাপক বিভাগকে বরণ করে আমার প্রথম অনুরোধ হচ্ছে সেলফোন বন্ধ করুন আমরা অবগত যে ইনস্টিটিউট অফ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ স্টাডিজ এন্ড রিসার্চ নিরন্তর কাজ করে চলেছে বাংলা তথা অন্য অনেক ভাষা চর্চার ক্ষেত্রে এই প্রতিষ্ঠানে ভাষা গবেষণা যতটা গুরুত্ব পায় ততটাই প্রাধান্য পায় ভাষার প্রায়োগিক দিকসমূহ ভাষাচার্য সুনীতি কুমার চ্যাটার্জি স্মারক বক্তৃতামালার সূত্রপাত করে ইনস্টিটিউট অফ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ স্টাডিজ এন্ড রিসার্চ তাদের ভাষা কেন্দ্রিক কর্মকাণ্ডের তালিকায় যুক্ত করলেন আরও একটি প্রশংসনীয় অধ্যায় আজকে সবার সূচনা হবে আইএলএসআর এর অধিকর্তা ডক্টর স্বাতী গুহর প্রারম্ভিক ভাষণের মধ্য দিয়ে Good afternoon, everyone. Warm greetings from Institute of Language Studies and Research, ILSR, Kolkata. ILSR is delighted to initiate our first distinguished lecture series named after Bhasha Chajo Shuniti Kumar Chatterjee, who was a renowned linguist and social scholar par excellence. And what is more exciting and joyful to us that we have got Professor Gayatri Chakraborty Spiha, University Professor of Columbia University, as the distinguished speaker to deliver the first Shuniti Kumar Memorial, Shuniti Kumar Chatterjee Memorial Lecture of ISR. Professor Spiha needs no introduction as he is a renowned scholar 
who has contributed immensely in global humanities and social science research and scholarship. We are grateful to her for kindly accepting our invitation. Thank you, Gayatri. Thank you, Malayana. We all know that Professor Sridhar became world famous through her path-breaking translation of French philosopher Jean Derrida's book of grammatology and her exemplary knowledge on language and language philosophy had taught to become one of the most eminent exponents of philosophy of deconstruction. Today, we are privileged to have with us Professor Sriha, and we look forward to learning, from more, learning more from her on the subject of her speech, which is how language holds us. We are also happy that we have, we are going to have, sorry, is reaching very soon, have our Honorable Minister in Charge, Departments of School and Higher Education Government of West Bengal, Professor Dr. Bushu, who is also the Chairperson of Institute of Language Studies and Research. On behalf of ISA, I would like to welcome Professor Sriha, Professor Rakta Bushu, and other distinguished members of the audience. Thank you. Ormo Jivone Utkoshe Shikorchoa Prokrito Bishobon Dito Bishobon in a Bangalid Jetalika. That she showed her audition coron or the Bob Guy to Jacob of this book. Uturne Jogotta Bapto Okaljoi Kajeshon Kiptoshar, Rustu for the Java, Trishto the Mantu. I'm sure the Edukuni Shorne at the Mari, the Grand Church at Jeshokol Provost to Provost for a city. Jan Utur Okulishik Kotto, Biniman. Naribad, Nimnobor Kitidash, Shorbo get three recation, recate to lesson, that on no on on Guruni of Broker Ujjo Shakor. Take a pot, Toyi Korizolesson, Lekabora, Shepot a party deeds. On a Shikaya Pedabari Utabox, we have a Ajibon in Georgia. The Vasker Rosti, Bohu Bimajon in Georgia with the Shumai Dari, Taka de Kama, the eight part Nevago the Jewelry. যে শীতল দূরবর্তী ও বাস্তব বিচ্ছিন্ন জ্ঞান চর্চার বিপ্রদীপে যে মানবমুখী সক্রিয়তাবাদ থাকে তার গুরুত্ব অপরিসীম ইনস্টিটিউট অফ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ স্টাডিজ এন্ড রিসার্চ আয়োজিত প্রথম সুনীতি কুমার চ্যাটার্জি স্মারক বক্তৃতা প্রদান করবেন অধ্যাপক गायत्री চক্রবর্তী শ্রীবাক তার বক্তৃতার শিরোনাম হাউ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ হোল্ডস আস সকলকে <laughs> লেখাপড়া <laughs> বলি <laughs> <laughs> I am deeply honored 
I am deeply honored to, to get this invitation to give the first the inaugural lecture for the Institute of Language Study and Research under the auspices of Shati Guru, who's director, the, she's director and she really has done me, she has given me a way of communicating to you many things that I really need to say here, so I thank her for this occasion. I'm also honored by the generous introdu introduction that I would have heard by the Honorable Minister in Charge, Sri Rakta Oshu, if he had been able to get here. Because his introduction would have, would have allowed me to clear up a small misunderstanding. Although I admire immensely Sri Basu's various various uh, energetic contributions both to higher education and to the theater, I did in fact resign my position from the ad hoc committee that was established to put together a new education program for health reasons. If there was a miscommunication, miscommunications happened. I therefore did not take any part in the creation of the actual plan. And in fact, I did not endorse it. And I did not not endorse it because I was pretty clear that I had, in fact, I never read it. So therefore, I would like to say today in uh, public that this is what the situation was that there was a miscommunication it's understandable these things happen but i did not endorse the new uh, education plan nor did i not endorse it. i didn't read it circumstances have made it necessary to speak in the name of peace my profoundly ethical colleague at columbia university B. Hofer, who is an israeli intellectual who chairs the Department of Middle Eastern, African, and South Asian Studies, helps me speak also in memory of my dear friend and ally, Edward W. Saeed, dead these 20 years, who spoke to me lengthily at the very first meeting in 1974 about the incredible and tremendous feelings of displacement and oppression from elite to the subaltern, because Edward Said certainly was not a subaltern. So this is something that we need to know. I would also like to tell you a story which I've been told to tell you. I was supposed to be lecturing at um, keynoting an extremely important uh, conference on democracy at the University of Dresden on the um, 9th of December, I think. And this invitation had been uh, given to me long ago and a lot of planning had taken place. Suddenly, about um, um, two weeks ago, the rectorate of the university um, sent me a message through my faculty host that they would like to talk to me about my Israel-Palestine politics <coughs> before they decided what I would say. Now, this is a tremendous a tremendous gesture against academic freedom. I'm not exactly a youthful intellectual. I have proved my point and I should have been allowed to say what I wanted to say. I should have been trusted to say it in the appropriate manner in an academic context. So of course, I, uh, I uh, said immediately that I did not want to give the keynote. I canceled my own speech. So I, and I've been told by various friends that I should make this public wherever I go because it's not a big thing. It's okay. It's nice for me not to have to give another lecture. But that's not the point that we want to make. Anyway, Gil Hochberg gave us, she sent us, Gil Hochberg, who is herself Israeli 
and who comes from a family that has been hurt by the Holocaust. She is an Israeli for peace, my colleague. She sent me to many of us this poem. And I hope I'm a humanities person. I've given my life to poetry. So I hope you will be able to listen to this poem before I begin. This is by the black poet June Jordan. And it's called Moving Towards Home. I do not wish to speak about the bulldozer and the red dart, not quite covering all of the arms and legs, nor do I wish to speak about the night-long screams that reached the observation posts where soldiers lounged about, nor do I wish to speak about the woman who shoved her baby into the stranger's hands before she was led away, nor do I wish to speak about the father whose arms were shot through the head while they slit his own throat before the eyes of his wife, nor do I wish to speak about the army that lit continuous flares into the darkness so that others could see the backs of their victims lined against the wall, nor do I wish to speak about the piled up bodies and the stench that will not float. Nor do I wish to speak about the nurse again and again raped before they murdered her on the hospital floor. Nor do I wish to speak about the rattling bullets that did not halt on that keening trajectory. Nor do I wish to speak about the pounding on the doors and the breaking of windows and the hauling of families into the world of the dead. I do not wish to speak about the bulldozer and the red dirt, not quite covering all of the arms and legs, because I do not wish to speak about unspeakable events that must follow from those who dare, quote, to purify a people, those who dare, quote, to exterminate a people, those who dare to describe human beings as, quote, beasts with two legs, those who dare, quote, to sum up to tighten the noose, to step up the military pressure, to ring around civilian arrests with ranks, those who dare to close the universities, to abolish the press, to kill the elected representatives of the people who refuse to be purified. Those are the ones from whom we must redeem the words of our beginnings because I need to speak about home. I need to speak about living room where the land is not bullied and beaten into a tombstone. I need to speak about living room where the talk will take place in my language. I need to speak about living room where my children will grow without horror. I need to speak about living room where the men of my family between the ages of 6 and 65 are not marched into a roundup that leads to the grave. I need to talk about living room where I can sit without grief, without wailing aloud for my loved ones, where I must not ask, where is Abu Fadi? Because he will be there beside me. I need to talk about living room because I need to talk about home. I was born a black woman and now I'm become a Palestinian. Against the relentless laughter of evil, there is less and less living room. And where are my loved ones? It is time to make look our way home. I was a black woman. Now I'm a Palestinian. As I, slide one, please. As I, Guy Trispivak, I'm a Loha. Next slide. Next slide. Slide two. Marwendia. Now they made me stand there. I certainly don't do things like that. And these are all men. So go to slide three. And the Santa. This is Rohingya women that Palam, which I visited in August. Now I'm a Palestinian as I got this I am a Lohara Rohingya. Santal, that is translation. 
peace is translating myself into other spaces in order to translate. Okay. The um, I will approach my title from an individual and a collective angle. My title is How Language Holds Us. I use hold in the, in the sense carried by that root dr in dharma as it figures in the sense of a secular ethics. I cite here the extremely well-known tag from the Mahabharata. Dharma dharma vityahu dharma dharma vityahu. This is really not about religion. In, in, in English, if you translate dharma religion here, you would make a mistake. So this, this is more or less, I mean, this is a very, very well-known tag, most of you are beyond a certain age, above a certain age, you know it. Okay, dharma dharma vityahu dharma dharma vityahu. Uh, of late, confronted with the undeniable consequences of the of uh, what we found, of what we find of the Anthropocene, we are obliged also to consider that the relationship between language and animality in general, especially in the restoring of so-called primitive accumulation as the defi definitive predication of the Anthropocene must be considered. Primitive accumulation, the capitalization of land. That's, the, that's, the, that's it, right? And so we have to think about that. In the interest of time, I withhold that discussion here and simply indicate that any extended consideration would truly in, have to read in deep focus Jacques Derrida's pre prescient text, his last text, The Animal That I Therefore Am and I Follow. It's an extraordinary book. Especially as it, as it lays out Hegel's restrictions of the limits of the subject. I have written about this in Bengali, in, um, in Onustu. So, to an extent, I can say that perhaps you might want to just go there. Now, it's the next page, isn't it? I must be careful. If it had been possible within the existing regulations to use my services, as a private sector volunteer professor. That's what I am, a private sector volunteer professor. I'm not an NGO. I led the rough notes I have, I still have. I still have the rough notes of an examination of all the textbooks from pre-primary or Prague Pratomic to class 10 issued by the ministry in 10 to our collective WhatsApp video meetings, including students and teachers. I should mention here that these rural students, children of landless illiterate parents, were often quite vocal. We were, in fact, of course, not talking high theory, and some of the uh, participants were ages nine to 11. So I didn't share the information that they were being held up by language, again, to secular ethics, but that is what was happening. Commentary in practical language on the failure of the ethical discourse owed to students and teachers. Let me cite a remark by my scheduled class. They say they call it as a C, therefore I do not use the Dalit, etc. Uh, by my scheduled caste supervisor with only seven years of institutional teaching, although by that time I had worked with him for 15 years or so. He says to me, Didi, please remember that all the schools in, in all the districts of West Bengal have not been trained by you. 
In other words, he told me, you, you should suit your discourse to the level required. A version of what I'm suggesting by language holding us up. If I had spoken in a way that would not be accessible to these primary school teachers who had not been trained by me, I was not allowing them a language that would hold them up in the sense in which I'm using it. In simple Bengali, what he was do what he was doing, he was telling us to let my language hold them, as the children in simpler Bengali were telling me that the language and the pictures of the books were not holding them. I absolutely understand that this was not the format in which our advice could be taken. But by marking the spot here for future struggles of democracy against bureaucracy, power of the demos against the power of the bureaus, X marks the spot. Democracy, demos, Donovan. Ami Donovan Prochondo Koutuk. I think I can take this and make it my, my own. Prochondo Koutuk, that's what I am. The joke. I had also offered to train the textbook writers, seven at a time. Again, I fully understand that the textbooks are not written for SCST teachers of the informal sector. I gave absolute about two hours of one-on-one -on -one advice to one of the officers on a promising project. In the event, the advice was ignored. Again, I absolutely understand that for the administrative service, implementation must remain more important than quality. I call it activism as target practice, and I use it also at my own university. Activism as target practice. The falcon cannot hear the falconer. With no experience of committee work, and Master of University teaching at Jawaharlal Nehru University in 1980, and two weeks that very uh, summer at the And with decline, I resigned from the committee and neither endorsed nor did not endorse the new education. To let you know that I tried my best in my own way to learn from the subaltern how to our current committee. But this is not my topic today. Let me now get to the main point of my remarks. My sense of support, a difference in subject position in relationship to the in relationship to the situation. I just told you that my um, that my um, supervisor, who was in fact a Rwandan gentleman, knows quite well, the um, uh, did tell me about that, and it went on in that way. Now, I what I want to so show is the next CPT. Next, next slide. Can he go off or is he here? Yes, next slide. You look. No, he doesn't. Then we come. He doesn't get it. Then <laughs>
प्रॉब्लम की होती है It's all right because this is a break in the argument. I'm going back to something, so it can be a real break. Is it there? No. Oi do, oi da, oi da. Kintu chota gotta be. Na ami to kore chhi. Chota gotta. सुनीति बाबू बुक Origin and development of the Bengali language, affectionately called ODL by one and all. ODL, sorry, ODL by one and all. In, and on this page, he actually writes in Arabic script a Bengali that was written in that script before the our so-called Bengali script developed. And it's extremely interesting because the entire page is. Uh, that sort of Bengali and written in Arabic, and it's it's it, 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 it's something that was that you would have enjoyed looking at. That's how I was going to introduce him. So uh, the uh, what, what I really need to say is that I do not have the training to be able to comment on it, but I wanted to wanted to have that thing there so that you would know that if you if you Hit globality in that way, then you do not have to have any problems at all with drawing citizenship and having problems of that sort. So, I mean, although we must, of course, revise Trinity Wells' ideas of an Indo-Aryan people, nonetheless, Chatterjee's language emphasis can actually take that on board. In general, the general politics of this book is very much this kind of. complete globalization in the in the matter of the existence the origin and the development of bengali in my own work especially as i have insisted on the importance of bengali in bengal i have emphasized the child's free rational acquisition of language uh, the, the this idea of acquiring language from uh, developing a language which actually touches because it's pre-rational the infant it touches the possibility of ethical semiosis inside the child's meta psychological machines and that the parents actually learn that language and because the parents are speaking a language with with a history which existed before the child was born and will exist after the child dies slowly with the extraordinary extraordinary mental capacities of pre-rational children the child actually learns this language and this is called the first language of the mother tongue and i have said again and again that this is how in fact the child accesses what i call the lingual memory this is a kind of this is a kind of idea the uh, the idea of lingual memory which i also find from my work with the africans especially in nigeria and west africa where they are speaking a language which is written on memory rather than on the more uh, more primitive notion of paper or papyrus or stone or with a pencil or a chisel or whatever so to an extent the digital has caught up with them i call these these languages nemic languages m n e m i c because they are written on memory rather than merely oral and i would say that shunita uh, uh, chatji himself was extremely interested in africa and i am very pleased that he in fact mentions the um, 
mentions the place where I've been working now for about 12 years with these unsystematized languages, a place called Eorin, and I will speak about this later. But this is also a sign of his globality. He wrote a book on African languages, he's very interested in Yoruba, and he certainly went to Africa and so on. And as I said, I have in the training to actually comment on that, uh, the page that you didn't see, but uh, she, Chatterjee, made it absolutely clear that in the individual, on the individual level, the work relates to the proper use of this indirect and appropriate way of the isolation of imperialism. This, this is the way that we go back to, and this is also true in Africa. Now, would you show the next one? The next one. Yes, this is the one. I, you know, I, I don't really know what page it's on here. So let me just say that this is the uh, he writes. He writes. He writes right at the beginning of the of the. Can you hear me when I put the mic like this? Can you hear me in the back? Okay. He writes this way. This is right at the beginning of the book. Okay, and I. It's my own notes. Can anyone guess what the EPM is? Or even are you here? Can anyone guess what the EPM is there? No, it's the economic interest of the manuscripts, Marx. You know, the, and there is a certain kind of connection which I can't make now. But at any rate, so actually I have found this. The, uh, from Morris and Skia, Sweat and Wright and Jesperson and the rest. And from Helfenstein and Brugman, Masters of Indo-Aryan Indo Philology, like Umenbeck, and Vakanagra, Whitney and Bishop, all these names, Beams and Vandarta, Hermley and Grierson and others were naturally approached and studied for guidance and light when he was doing, um, when he was at college in his native town of Calcutta and he was learning Old English, history of the English language and a little Germanic philology. These were his special subjects. The modern methods of linguistic investigation, which I saw applied to English, filled me with admiration and enthusiasm. And as the problem of Indo-European is equally connected with my own speech, my interests naturally began to turn wistfully in, the, in that direction. So a few years, I began also to look around myself, to observe facts, in the words as written and as actually spoken, a few years of haphazard reading and observation and taking notes and stumbling on in this way while working as assistant professor and lecturer in English and in comparative philology in the University of Calcutta. And then in 1916, I presented as a three years research program for the Prim Chandraj, right? Right on studentship of the Calcutta University, a scheme. And here you have it, nice heavy book. So to an extent, what he's talking about here is the enabling violation of imperialism. This is a concept that we have, it's a rape, but it produces something. He admires this, and it's a, it's a kind of affirmative sabotage, it's a collaboration. So to an extent, this is something that we must notice. And this is where, as many of you know, his intellectual ambition crosses the trajectory of the intellectual ambition of the narrativized author of Sheshir Kovita, Rovi Thakur, a pseudonym for the novel's hero, Amitrai, a satiric representation of an ego ideal. In Marxism and the philosophy of language, Voloshinov suggests a generic division of literature by way of reported speech, by way of the distance pattern, and distance, and also the kind of uh, the kind of uh, relationship between the stator and statement. From that followed that suggestion with Shishir Kovita. The multiple framing of narrator and 
composer would be interesting. ODBL is not, of course, a literary text, but there too we will find variations in the representation of the intellectual subject position, the most interesting being the Sanskrit material cited on discont as discontinuous epigraphs. I thank Sri Nishimha Prashad Bhaguri for helping me read them. I read, we read them together. Here I'll read just one of the three bits where Chatterjee thanks forerunners who ran before the British. Okay, next one. You see what he's writing. He is writing, it's not written in Devanagari script there. It's written in, in, in Latin script. He is writing that, that he's going to, he's going to uh, acknowledge, he is going to pay his respects, obeisance, he doesn't know. Those, uh, those sages and saints who were, came, who were born before him and who had actually created the pathway before him. So this is one way, I mean, all his, all his teachers, uh, the British teachers, they knew Sanskrit well. They, some had written on Bengali itself. They knew Prakrit and so on and so forth. And it's very interesting that one, I couldn't get anything about him quickly from my Calcutta study, but one of them, Leonard Barnett, who was a Jewish man who was against Zionism and against the establishment of Israel, when before I give this text to Shati for a publication, I will surely get a hold of this because it will really fit into. And, um, uh, and Professor Chatterjee writes that uh, Dr. Barnett befriended him. It wasn't just that. It, and Dr. Barnett, in fact, supervised his work in London. So therefore, the, this idea they could read, they could read the. Um, they could read the epigraphs. They were written in Latin script, although these people also read the Avnagari. And as I have written long, long ago, and Dr. Chatterjee also writes about it, they welcomed the um, elite Indians as fellow Aryans. And Chatterjee, in spite of all his Indo-Aryan stuff, is very critical of it. I, he's, he, I like his politics, by and large, and it's not exactly mine, but so what. But at any rate, the so therefore, this is one way of taking care of the subject position because the way he relates to this Sanskrit stuff and the way the, his teachers would relate, the British would relate to it, first of all, the subject position is different. And second of all, he acknowledges teachers who long preceded the British. This is a very, and most people don't notice these things. But humanities folks do. They look at the margins. And remember that Dr. Chatterjee retired as the National Humanities Professor of India. So that or was it in Europe? I think India, no? Think. But I'm not completely sure. I think the national must, it must, it must be Indian. Yes, so the National Humanities Professor. So in fact, he also read this way. Those of you who have read his stuff in Sanskriti, where he, for example, is talking about who, how did Radha and Krishna's uh, relationship, how was it established? You will see he reads exactly this way, you know, like as if the text is a detective story and you have to actually go through it to find the clues so that the answer, which can't be certain, he says that too, the humanities have to deal with the unverifiable, but you can make suggestions so that his way of reading he acknowledges this way of reading but anyway the um, this is language that is clearly designated in the sense of my title to hold up the users users uh, users as does dharma as secular ethics my sense of support coming from these passages uh, to difference in subject position in the, that relationship to translated was in fact also established by the um, the way in which Dr. Chatterjee uses these uh, these uh, 
utter, utter, utter shit, as it were, and I will actually look at the other uh, Sanskrit stuff uh, somewhat later. But this offers him historical stature, transcendental generality, and existential immediacy. As you read this book, every time you read it, there is an existential present which makes you perform these Sanskrit gestures, which in fact is a separate place he makes for himself before he steps into the introduction. The task of celebrating the mother tongue is redefined for him through this, from an institutional validation from a colonial institution necessarily practicing collaborative epistemic violence as civilizing mission, putting the mother tongue in that mode. So this releases it. Those Sanskrit verses translate violence into enablement, drag the possibility of transforming the incalculable mother tongue into an object of creative research. I gave a paper on Sheshe Kovita at the University of California at Berkeley about five years ago. Alakon Mondopadhyay, who, with Amurish Tashukto, gave me a first copy of ODBL. They were ashamed that I didn't have one. Uh, a first of my first copy of ODBL told me that Amit Rai had taken a copy of that book with him when he went to Shilong to be alone. I found out subsequently that the ever modest Professor Chatterjee said again and again that his reputation was assured since he had been mentioned in a novel by Gurudev. The fact is even to be found in the tiny biography of Professor Chatterjee written by my teacher, Professor Shukumari Bhattadi. I can read this fictive episode as part of Tagore's representation of Amitra as a creative colonial subject whose translation of the text of colonial life and enhancing it beyond its lineaments is what Tagore's topic is. He is contrasted by Tagore to the westernized Bengalis who imitate the British. On the opening paragraph of the novel, Amit's father represents him as follows. Okay, the next one. Next one. It's very interesting. If, no, it's not this Okay, this is really his father talking, and so the project is to appropriate the culture of the colonials successfully rather than through imitation, okay, translation, if you like, as I was saying, rather than creative translation, rather than imitation. In other words, having digested the English, how will I find a better Bengali style? That was his project. This is where Tagore makes, this is why Tagore makes him take the origin and development of the Bengali language to Shilong to consider how to find a better Bengali style, having digested the English culture as well as he could. His own project was self-decorative. His project was self-decorative and gendered, a love quest by uh, his by some uh, one you know dressing right, not severe robe, not high heels on women. So this there is a description of that as well. Uh, you know, 
longer, longer. It, it was. धुती पड़े ना टूपी रही है Give you some, give you, uh, show you uh, something comparable, and so, and this is how he actually goes into the um, goes into the um, uh, the uh, love quest, presenting himself as a fancy object dressed well. Okay, so, Naran, tell me what that. That's it. Did you? Beshi kapur pray pare. Kano na. जड़ी दे चढ़ाएसलमानी लखनऊ टूपी सदार ऊपर सदा क्या जयदेवती Uninterested in gender analysis, Amit and Lavanna's solution was that that love, as such, could not be tied to the social and contractual legitimacy of marriage, a point of view most congruent with, say, Villiers de Lisle or Cuisman's Arabour. Amit Rai is in touch. With the best of European material being read at Oxford and Cambridge, Shumiti Babu is meeting up with Nigerians and the Ashanti in London. To the extent, as I was saying before, to the extent that he will go to Africa and write on African languages, this was altogether unusual. He was interested in he was interested in marginal groups, tribal groups, Sufis. But never seemed intellectually moved by gender or sexual difference. We'll uh, talk about that. His administration, his admiration, sorry, his admiration for Bantu philosophy and African art cannot be praised enough at that time. This was extremely unusual, and this had nothing to do with dressing right and looking for love. The mind you, there could have been a little more gendering. But Bantu philosophy and African art cannot be praised enough. I wish she had shown some interest in what I call the naming languages that I have just described to you, and so I hope that in some way I will be able to make you see what it is that I mean by uh, by naming languages. So. Uh, 
the, as, as I said to you already, that this was that language that was written directly on the memory, and this, to an extent, one can say that it was a sort of metaphysical, uh, empirical representation, not metaphysical at all, empirical representation of this way of naming languaging. The, they, 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 these languages, that's the one. Um, okay, if I ever did GCS for the kind of um, uh, PowerPoint, you do GCS for the so this is what I mean by mimic languages. I have been working for some time with the non-unsystematized book Vernacular Languages of Africa as, uh, as far they are, as they are spoken by the beneficiaries of code development because these are A, because they are, so they are spoken by the beneficiaries of code development, the absolute subalterns, mostly women. B, because they, they are used by politicians to foment pre-electoral ethnic conflict. These, their special characteristics characteristic is that they are, quote, written on memory. Historically, this has led to practice, practice-based rather than theory productive time, uh, uh, time uh, future-oriented civilizations. Can this be discussed as an originally historic restraint on the Anthropocene in an extramoral fashion? Today, with the invention of digital memory and now quantum memory, there is current interest in traditional techniques of training mnemonic languages that bypass the alphabet. I, and, and I work with Claire Bowen, who is at Yale, and Stephen Bird, who is at Charles Darwin University in Australia, and others. Can a practical extension, and I wish Trinity Babu had gone there, but of course his interest was in another kind of uh, lingual memory, as I have said. Can a practical extension of subaltern studies be the politics of learning these languages on the job for development workers? Our, part of the work that we do in Nigeria, our projects in radiating globality extend here from the savannas of Nigeria to the indigenous language, quote, development areas of Guatemala, which according to some, as recently declassified CIA documents reveal, is where the Cold War really started. This might once again allow us to escape beyond the nationizing. Centralizing exhortations of merely post-colonial radicalism and move toward the abstract comradeship of globality a new contemporaneity. I have referred to this in the preface in the new edition of my uh, Death of a Discipline and, and asked how we would be able to access the unsystematized languages and also the vast populations, the major victims of the Anthropocene who are naming, who use naming languages languages written on memory, generally described as illiterate. These are mnemic languages, not just a rarity. And the memory did not nourish a, site, a certain kind of pan-Africanism, as Islam did, the memory of this kind of scripting, did nourish a certain kind of subaltern pan-Africanism, as Islam did in the North. Two rather different models, the Islamic model uh, Mr. Chatterjee did write on quite at length because he was speaking to the Nigerians, which is, that's really the place. And he also noticed something that contemporary people don't notice when they only look at Boko Haram, that in Nigeria there was a, a perfect 
peace between the Christians and the Muslims and the uh, animists. As Islam did in the north, two rather different models before continentality, before the artificial nation state frontiers laid down by the colonizers. So I wanted to read this because I was a little sad that this is not, although the name of the place, Ilorin, certainly is in his writings about to whom he was speaking in London. He certainly was not presenting himself in one way or the other. But what I would like to say is that although he is not interested in gendering, there is a moment where there is a very peculiar kind of gendering, and now we can go to another of the Sanskrit things that he writes, the Sanskrit quotes. Let's see. Question Question Some people they see Vacha is not quite speech. I don't quite know how I'm going to get into the problem with the translation. Let's call it speech as everybody does. So there are some who see speech question Nadarshan, but they don't. There are some who hear speech, but they do not hear speech. Then, how are the real grammarians going to do it? Uto. That's why Tanwang Visasri, the body is laid out for the true grammarian. Whose body? Jaya Iba Patkya, the way the wife does to the husband. Legal, consensual sexual intercourse. This is a kind of, although he's citing, it's a very deep incest wish with the mother tongue. The, so, Jaya Iba Patkya. Ushati Suvasa, when she wishes for Ushati, when she wishes for sexual contact and is dressed well. Hmm? This is the thing, this is where he describes his method. It ain't a prayer. It certainly is not a prayer. This is a secular description where the ethical position is the of consensual sex coming from the mother as wife. It's a very, very interesting, it's a mother tongue. It's a very, very interesting, uh, interesting verse which he uses, but he covers himself. He covers himself by going directly to an extremely spiritual line, which is once again, not the, not the, uh, not the prayer part of it. We all know it, it's a very common one. Avira Avira not the Asadoma, Asadoma, etc. Now, Avi Avi Mahedi, that's a very interesting, that's a very interesting um, line. Avi, that's a Avera uh, huh? in the carnival. So twice. Show, show. It's, you know, it's not like revelation, it's not like a big, um, a big religious spiritual term. It's just show, show, Avi, Avi. Huh? In the climate world, you can't make it in any other way. And then, AD, that is E, root E, come walk around. Huh? But that M, it's very interesting because, as we well know, it's very well known. The three lines before use the Ma, right? Ma, Ma, like accusative. Asato Ma, Sattamaya. Tomaso Ma, Jyotir Kamara. Mrityur Ma. Ma. So what, uh, this I did not know this, in, in fact, Rishima told me that often in uh, Vedic Sanskrit, you uh, put in a word in between two words, just simply, uh, this happens in Chinese, which I know a little bit, uh, you know, you just put it in, it's just simply for nothing, to make some kind of balance. And that avira avirma, that ma, 
is that he thought that it was a me, mama. I think it's a ma because all of the ma's are there before. So it would be avir avir ma, come to me, edi, come, walk around. So this is a heavy duty. It's not spiritual, there's no prayer here. But nonetheless, this, this, this real hall, this covers this open and um, incestuous sexuality of the, of the couplet where the grammarian, the grammarian's work is such that the grammarian doesn't do it himself. It's the wife, the language, that opens herself and uh, uh, opens her body, tamu, opens her body when she wishes to, and dressed in good, good clean clothes. It's fantastic. So these are the Sanskrit verses that Trinity Babu puts before the introduction, where he is, as it were, quote, changing the subject position of the relationship between the utterer and the utterance. These are at the head of his work. So, and this to an extent. So, the, uh, and now, there is one thing, however, that has to be noticed. Now, what, what, what kind of time am I? I'm just about hitting an hour, is that all right? Do you think I could take another 10 minutes or so? What do you think, are you bored? I could just stop. Because I'm always bored by the sound of my voice. <laughs> Can you imagine how much I talk? But anyway, so let me just say this then. There is something that a humanist, a humanities teacher would notice. Okay, Amitraya takes the book with him to Shiva. But the author, not Robi Thakur, but Rabindranath Thakur, does not tell us what he does with it. It's empty. Now this is, the humanities teachers will surely know, but the others will also know. It's a very common place thing. I'm not saying anything unusual. This is a topos. This is a common way of dealing with literary production. There are many other examples. The biggest example, of course, when people talk about uh, quick starts modernism, that Sancho Panza leaves the novel. Yeah? You will know. So, uh, therefore, this just this image of someone not doing something. I have, in fact, noted this in a, in a long piece on Gura called Resident Alien, that in the very, people do talk a lot about the fact that Togo never said anything since in Shiraidaho, etc. They admit he never says anything about his relationship to Lanon Shah. But in uh, the, this, that very important book, for nothing, right at, on the first page, as Binay is standing holding the railings of his Rada, on the street, a guy, a mendicant, Poppy, sings, huh? and he just walks out. He never appears again. So these kinds of a complicated topological absent use of absence. And of course, there are people here who went to English honors at Presidency College. Tarukwa who certainly taught Cordelia this way. And he certainly, when he taught Cordelia's speech, you know, nothing. Eight syllables of silence. Nothing. Eight syllables of silence. Nothing will come on. Nothing. Speak again. So he certainly showed us that it was the silence that was making a point, not rather than rhetorical extravagance. So to an extent, this emptiness in um, in um, uh, Shesha Kovita, that he takes the book, but we are not told what he does with it. It's, it's something that gestures toward the outside of the book. Now let me just say what I will do with it, and then I will make an end. Of late, I have been thinking of activist reading as a relay. Activist reading, activist historiography. About this, I have written elsewhere. And I really, I'm just about to finish a book by on W. Du Bois. And Du Bois, in fact, has said that uh, 
he wrote in 1957, a little before his death, he left with his wife uh, uh, a text six years before his death. To what I have done well will live long and justify my life. What I have not been able to succeed at, I hope others will take it up endlessly and that will be my, my applause. And I hope they will bring it to fruition better than I could. And that will be my applause. To an extent, with, uh, with uh, this emptiness uh, that there is in Omitrai, I will actually use that he doesn't uh, know, do anything with, with Sunit Rabu. I would use the many, many places in his book where a woman's name is given. And it's sometimes good, like from the Turkic languages, Begum, Khatun, etc. And some, you know, princess, uh, lady, and sometimes bad. <coughs> Magi, um, uh, Magi Tabba, uh, and others that I didn't even know existed. And so, and each time, the name of the woman, the, that word, is just simply an example of some kind of a vowel movement phonetics. It's really like Google. That is to say, you put everything together just by the phonetical connections. So I would, Asya Jabbar, who was my very dear friend, wonderful Algerian French feminist, who I'm very proud to say dedicated her last novel to me. Nowhere in my father's house, the title tells you something. So to an extent, she herself learned 18th century and post Muhammad Arabic which she didn't know well because she was brought up in French Algeria, she learned this so that she could inhabit the moments of women in totally male-centered texts. It's a fantastic book called Far From Medina, where Lon Medin, where she picks up on each one of those woman moments and she fleshes it out in a, in a kind of narrative. So I would like to do something like that with uh, with um, the many places where Shumidiwa uses women's names in this way, I think that there is a place for a relay there, and um, we'll see what happens if that happens. And the one that I really like, this is the one that I really, really like. See, look. It's a Chutanuk. Chutanuk Nama Devo Dashiki Taig Tamaita Balanasu. Balanasu is from Baranasi. Balanasi. Devadine Nama Rupadake. Rupadake is Rupadakshi. So, this particular, this first example of Maladi, you know, we worked on it. So, I would very much like to go into this in some way and see where he got it, and if possible, work with someone who is capable of guiding me here, because this is not my specialty at all. I do have the guy Kibo, who is my uh, who teaches me Bengali at uh, at the University of Chicago, Frenchman, who's on my committee for the bilingual Bengali editions edition that we are doing. Shankar and I started it. So this is, I'm just telling you about, and especially for, I hope there are some feminists in this room, especially for that, you know, I will, I do want to do this kind of affirmative sabotage, if you like, if you start it every day, if you like, I think it won't tell you anything about Trinity, but it's not about it, but that's what uh, humanity is learning to an extent is like. So the, the, I won't, I won't go on, into the final, final uh, thing, but the but the final thing, much more than I said. But the final thing is there is a place where language does not hold anymore. I mean, I saw coming in the stuff like a like some kind of a children's festival, a conference on global business. There is today, uh, uh, perhaps not in West Bengal, a big pharma strike. But these are all related to the Anthropocene. One good, one curious. 
But uh, the, the thing is that today we are run by a narrative where human accountability is completely trivial. Nothing matters. Deepesh's work here is certainly worth reading. But I was writing about this in 97, and I think, therefore, that is the limit of what I have said today about uh, the, 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 the language holds us up. The language means nothing here. So the thing is that I just want to show a poem that came, that, that flamed up for me yesterday. Because I do, and only one thing I should show. Because he knows, he knows this, uh, this work because we do this together. We do sit together and say that although you can't see the little children, uh, you can't see that the uh, that this is brown. Because the more, as far as you go, it's so big, it's fat. The old rishis, they actually learned, it, calculated this by mathematics. But now when I show them the pictures on my phone from the moon, the round earth, etc. I say, actually, it is from a huge ball they are sitting on, hanging in outer space, and people are hanging on the other side. Why don't they fall off? I can't go into this discussion now because I think that the subaltern should be introduced to the world's cartography if this climate change is just not going to be something that we do and then we go to smart capital and so on and so forth. It's not going to happen. So yesterday, and so I say this to them, and I put, uh, uh, because the textbooks are nonsense, they say that you know, the thing goes around like a top. The earth goes around like a top. What would the other side? So I put a thing, a, a stick with where the sun is. And after we have talked about everything, um, an hour and a half has passed, the sun moves, right? And so I say to them, look, the, this pretty bit has just moved this little bit in an hour and a half. It moves very, very slowly. But, but we are all moving. We don't know it. We are all moving at that speed. The trees, the rocks, the everything, and we are too. We have moved, but we don't know. Just as we don't know that it's wrong. And it's, you know, it's exciting for these kids because it's a, it's really strange. I'm moving. I mean, it, you know, I don't know it. Okay. So I was coming to an end of the speech, what it's worth, and I was thinking of the fact that there is a limit to what my topic is, how uh, how language holds us up. There's nothing holds us up. Language is of no use. This is uh, nothing. So then suddenly, a poem, this is the humanities thing, a poem that I first read in high school, and that I must have read a thousand times, that many teachers have taught, suddenly framed up. I want to share it, just not the whole poem, just the, it's not a long poem like the first one. Just the end, and many of you will know it. No motion has she now, no force. She neither hears nor sees. Roll round in earth's diurnal course. It's unnegotable. Roll round in earth's diurnal course. Like rocks, stones, trees. This is what I love you, closing. Thank you for that. Sometimes you really lost for words. Amra, I'm going to 
আমি জানি না কারোর প্রশ্ন থাকতে পারে কিনা কিন্তু আমরা একটু আলোচনা চালিয়ে নিয়ে যেতেই পারি परिचय दिए अपने माइक्रोफोन আচ্ছা সেক্ষেত্রে আপনি একটু যদি এগিয়ে আসেন দয়া করে একটু সামনে আসুন এগিয়ে আসুন क्षेत्र विशेष लुकिए रखे आज के जगत विभिन्न धरण समस्या स्पीचिंग मोहन पाल बर्धमान राजकलेजार प्रश्न हम धर्म संगे सम्पर्कुक्त मैं धर्म जेखने केवल मात्र भलो शिक्षा देखने मूल्यबोध जेगे उठे शिक्षा गो दे लैंगुएज तो अनेक क्षेत्र आलदा दिक देखते যাই হোক কিন্তু কথা হচ্ছে সেই তাদের কাছ থেকে আসা করছি না কিন্তু একজন 
But nonetheless, in general, I was speaking in praise. And therefore, I kept only to the way in which it is possible that language holds us in a secular ethics in the way in which nothing else does. And I said this by citing what I have often cited, the way we learn a language before reason as children, as uh, infants, that that is what opens up the ethical lines of ethical symbiosis in the in meta psychologically because the little child is not understanding a language it happens the other way so this is this is why i actually focused on what it can do good and i tried to read him and read shishikunta in terms of this understanding but if there were, and believe me, I will do this in the in the paper that I submit. If, if we certainly have to see how, because especially, and I'm almost going into the second question, especially the, uh, in a country where we have we have shocked to death the meaning of the word dharma and made it into a kind of mere genocidal uh, word religion. Huh? That, that is certainly, we have to take the responsibility of showing how, in the name of Dharma, Dharma understood, not as I was uh, interpreting it, but what's the use my interpreting it that way when the general public would hear something else? And this was Mohan Pal's question. In a country where that word has been politically mobilized for murder, it is not possible just to use it and feel good. So therefore, in fact, and what I would, I mean, I already spoke a little bit about Israel and Palestine. And to an extent, June Jordan's poem also describes our country. So to an extent, we will uh, not quite, not quite, the initial is going to a place where people perhaps haven't gone yet. Who knows? Who knows? I don't live here. But at any rate, therefore, the um, uh, yes moment, absolutely, I have to think about the fact that words don't exist in a vacuum. Nice moral righteous that can make the word mean what she made it mean. But the word exists outside in society, and it is a risky word. And to an extent, uh, my friend, uh, Bhima Krishna Mutilal and I both were very irritated, we're both secular folks. Uh, in fact, Bhima was uh, an atheist, but apparently, according to his family, Turkey, and I don't think he did that, but that's as it may be. So am I an atheist. But the idea was that we were not allowed to say anything about this complicated discourse of uh, of what is called Hinduism, because it has been taken away from us. The way in which it has been politicized, it's been taken away from us. So therefore, thank you for asking that question. What Now, the reason why a Spanish speaking, I mean, you see, we also did this, this group is called rethinking globality, right? So we've been to Senegal, we've been to uh, China. In China, in fact, it was very strange. There was a guy who uh, gave us, who heard me give a talk called uh, Imperatives to Reimagine the Silk Road. So what I was suggesting was that rather than just oppose it, we, we never opposed Europe's Marshall Plan. We thought that was a fantastic thing. Rather than just oppose it, if they thought of it as 
a, a cultural discourse which was not what the president wants to do, intellectuals. Can we teach, uh, you know, this, this, uh, how you change people's minds is through teaching, sustained teaching. And it, it, this is how I spoke. I mean, you know, I spoke about the planetary revolution and all that. But uh, the, the guy spoke to me who was, who had bought uh, the, uh, the uh, college. China is a very complicated place right now. So uh, I can't go into it in detail, but he said, look, my father was killed by Mao uh, during the Cultural Revolution. He was part of the Red Guard. And I was part of the youth Red Guard. But what I've been thinking is that Mao did it absolutely in the wrong way, quickly by turning everything around and then killing people. But the ideas themselves were not that. So, and I heard you speak today, and I, I was just wondering, and since I own the College of Arts and Sciences, I was just wondering if you would make me uh, an international level uh, institute. So I said to him, no, I won't make you an international level institute. I've taught internationally now for 58 years. They're crooks and nonsense. So being international people in is not going to particularly make you better. I will try to listen to you and give you a good school, which is quite different from an international school. So uh, I should know. The, the, uh, so the, then he gave us appointments, honorary appointments, and he made me the director of a transnational uh, institute. On and we actually spoke. There are many photographs of Hari Basuji and myself, like Lisa Pramani, Hiroko Sakamoto from Japan, and uh, Sivan Sankar from uh, Mamadou Juf from Senegal, etc., etc., a huge, completely international group. We would go, we would listen to the courses, be very careful with it. I mean, really like teaching them. Okay? Finally, we were closed by the party. That's another story. Another story. So, uh, anyway, so China was there too, and Chinese language. Okay, so it isn't like it's all the same. But it would be sense, I didn't know this. My friend, Jean Franco, knew it, of course. Franco was a Guatemala and she was living in Guatemala when this was happening. Uh, the, I didn't know this, but CIA has just declassified the documents. The way in which the, those papers were dropped and so the Cold War to an extent started there. They had a democratic government which was being uh, represented as defeated when uh, actually it wasn't defeated at all. And finally they took it over, right? And so Guatemala happens to be the place because this is about indigenous languages, right? And our real, it's a fantastic question, it's, uh, because our, I'm really trying to be fast. Our real project, you see, this is why these are activist projects, not just grant proposals. Our real project, nobody would ever give us a grant proposal for this, number one. And number two, we don't really know how to do it, but one is working for the philosophers of the future. Claire and at EAU and Stephen Bird, etc., they give us uh, the way in which the intellectual uh, development worker can learn from the um, from the subaltern who's in those areas. Okay? But our real project is to make it possible for the development lobby, which is generally the exploitation lobby, we, for them. Not just, you see, they are constantly talking about really touching the communities. Uh, World Health Organization, you name it. But the community speaks these unsystematized languages. So really touching, and sometimes a good development worker will think, I mean, I'm talking not out of books, this is experience, this is an activist society, right? So sometimes a good development, because there are some good everywhere, a good development worker will think, well, you know, I'm going to Rwanda, I really should learn a language. And what does she learn? She learns Zanzibari and Swahili, with no idea that uh, that's not the language to learn, that's a lingua franca that sounds like English. So to an extent, the uh, we want somehow the development lobby to think of the world's wealth of languages, not as an inconvenience, even as it says, we want to touch the community. There's no requirement for language learning in any of the job descriptions. And so we don't find, we, it doesn't have to be political, it doesn't have to be everyone or anything. Just an opening. 
So I've been working with this very small rural university, not Ibado or anything like that, not the big Colorado. Ibado, in fact, is just like this in Spanish. But at any rate, we have been working at 10 years old university, 11 years now, Para State University, State University, dependent on the government. And so, and all the um, people I work with, you know, students, faculty, etc., a small group, but fantastic. They are so enthusiastic about this, but they also don't know what to do, right? But for 12 years, we've been keeping on, keeping on, uh, learning these uh, unsystematized languages, right? So Guatemala has much, I mean, we have one person on our board who teaches at SOAS, Iranian German. Okay, so she actually is not quite like us. She has a grant proposal type uh, uh, enablement from an NGO. So she says that Guatemala has many of these small development places. And on the other side, there is the political stuff uh, because this radiating reality is not just about this project put together here. Uh, it's also about learning how to understand globality rather than the story of globalization really making everything as wonderful global business. But understanding that in globality, the old uh, problems like the Cicero, like for us, theocracy, etc., etc., are coming back because the so called democratic post coloniality was very small, very orientalist, discovery of India, and uh, very um, uh, tied to a class that had no, in spite of everything they said, had no real connection with the people. So, sorry, I, it, it was such a good question that I took a little while to explain to you. We learned a lot. And, and you know, this, salute you this question for the work you're doing. This question, why Guatemala? It was the last question that Harry asked me. Gatidi, oh. Gatidi, tell me, why Guatemala? And I gave him a longer answer because, you know, it wasn't in the thing. And of course, the, two days after that, he was, he was, gone. He was uh, taken to God. So it's a. Uh, it was also a pleasure answering you because Thank you. I was hearing. Thank I was hearing you. Harry. Thank you. language 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 thank you is there a possibility of misinterpretation as well? How do you how do you address that? And also receive language they are positioning does does that matter as well? Okay, very good. So, we could shout Tartari for Bolsi, and Amiki to Western Eastern Moliki to Bolini. Amiki Kota Korazi, Shita, Oi Kotakai, Amaka, Silobola, and Kota Korazi. Suturan Amar Monehoide Haranar from a Bishni. It is a political path at the night. And a Mutata about Kikore, Jeloki Bolse, Takitak. Background 
এটা কানছে রাখলা ধারণা না কেন কেন কারু কারু ধারণা যা একটুখানি খ্যাতি পায় সেটার মধ্যে পলিটিক্স আছে কিন্তু ব্যাপারটা হচ্ছে যে এই চিন্তাটা একেবারে অতি সাধারণ বুদ্ধিমান লোক করতে পারে এই চিন্তা এবং সুতরাং আমি যে ওয়েস্টার্ন পার্সপেকটিভ একটা আমার আমি করতে পারি আমি মনে করি না আমার আমি কখনোই ইসলাম বলে দেখি না জিনিসটাকে আমার মনে হয় যে ধারণার দেশ নেই সুতরাং এটা আইডিয়ালিজম না এইটা হচ্ছে আনভেরিফাইবিলিটি কেননা আমি এটাকে তো ধরে রাখি না আবার দেশ দেশ থেকে কি রকম কি বলিয়ে দিচ্ছে সেটাও দেখতে হয় এটাকে বলা যেতে পারে একটা একটা কর্তব্য আছে যে যদিও ধারণার দেশ নেই তাহলেও আমাদের দেখতে হবে যে লোক বলছে সুতরাং প্রশ্নটা খুব ভালো হয়েছে এবং এটা ওই ডাবল বাইন্ড করে এগোতে হয় দেশ নেই কিন্তু দেশ আছে এইভাবে কাজটা করতে দুই পায় দুই রকম চাল আচ্ছা আর এই আমি কিন্তু আর প্রশ্ন মানে নাই আর এই আমি কিন্তু ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ অফ দ্য বডি বলিনি আমি ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ অফ দ্য বডি বলিনি আমি বলে তো বলে লোকে বলে ওইটা বলেছে ওই পতঞ্জলির মহাবাস্য হ্যাঁ ওই যে ওই যে সেক্সুয়াল ইয়েটা কাজটা ওটা কিন্তু পতঞ্জলি আমি সুতরাং আর তাও উনি কিন্তু বলেননি যে ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ অফ দ্য বডি উনি একটা জাস্ট একটা রূপক দিয়েছেন যেমন করে পত্নী তার কাম যখন আসে তখন সে নিজের থেকে তার তনু খুলে দেয় স্ট্রেচ করে ভালো সুন্দর পরিষ্কার কাপড় পরে ওইটাও ঢুকে গেছে তো কথা হচ্ছে যে সেই রকম ভাবে এটা একদম রূপক তার ইয়ে এটা মানে মেচাফারও নয় সিমিলি সুতরাং এই যে ব্যাপারটা এটার মধ্যে ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ অফ দ্য বডি কিছু নেই আর ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ অফ দ্য বডি বললে অবশ্যই কিন্তু এই যে ইন্টারপ্রিটেশনটা ঠিক কি ভুল এইটা দুর্ভাগ্যবশত এই যে রমিলা হ্যাঁ আমি তার কাছ থেকে অনেক কিছু শিখেছি এবং রমিলা এত ভালো ঐতিহাসিক যে সে ভয় পায় না হিউম্যানিটি কেন কি আছে যে সেটা জানে সে আমাদের এক হাতে কিনার এক হাতে বেঁচতে পারে সুতরাং তার কোনো কোনো ইয়ে নেই ভয় নেই যে গ্রাজুয়েশন কথা বললে ওরে বাবা আমার ঐতিহাসিক এটা যদি রক্ত পেয়ে যায় ব্যাপার হচ্ছে যে রমিলা বলছিল যে কি করে ওরা বোঝে যে আসলে কাশ্মীরে যখন সেই বহু শতাব্দী আগে মারামারি হয়েছিল আমার ঠিক মনে নেই এখন কত শতাব্দী আগে বলছিল মারামারি হয়েছিল লোকে বলে পঞ্চাশ হাজার হিন্দু মারা হয়েছিল আসলে তা হয়নি এবং কেন হয়নি সেটা রমিলা বললো যে ডেফিনেটলি যারা হারে বা যারা যেতে তারা এখনো বাড়িয়ে বলে তুমি যদি দুই দিক থেকে দেখো একজনরা বলছে আমাদের স্ট্রাইকে এত লোক বেরিয়েছিল আর পুলিশ বলছে ওদের স্ট্রাইকে অত লোক বেরিয়েছিল আর সুতরাং আর সেটা আবার পুলিশ হেরেছে না জিতেছে তার উপরেও নির্ভর করে এইভাবে এগিয়ে এগিয়ে দেখলে দেখা যায় যে কোথাও লেখা নেই ইত্যাদি ইত্যাদি কিন্তু শেষে তো স্পেকুলেশন শেষে তো গিয়ে এটা ভেরিফাই করা যাবে না কাজে আমি তখন বলছিলাম যে খুব ভালো লাগে বলছে শুনে যেন তুই ঐতিহাসিক সব সময় এ করছ ভেরিফাই করছ হ্যাঁ ভেরিফিকেশন আর প্রত্যেকটা স্টেপ দেখালে যে কিভাবে তুমি শিখেছ এইভাবে চিন্তা করতে কিন্তু একদম শেষে গিয়ে আনভেরিফাই এটা তুমি মানে এই অ্যাক্টিভ হিস্ট্রি আনভেরিফাই কাজে ওইটা তো জানতে হবে সুতরাং এই যে বৃহৎ রেসপন্সিবিলিটি অফ মিস ইন্টারপ্রিটেশন এইটার সুতরাং আমি কখনো বলবো না যে আমি ঠিক বলেছি আমি বলবো আমি এই বলেছি আমার কথাটা শুনে আমি ওকে আমি কোনো ছাত্রকে বলি না থিওরি অ্যাপ্লাই করতে তাহলে ওই আমি যদি মার্কস অ্যাপ্লাই করি তাহলে আমি তারে কিছুতে পাবো ওইটা আমি ডেভিডি অত্যন্ত বুদ্ধিমান লোক আমার অনেক বেশি জানেন কিন্তু এটা জানার ব্যাপার না 
তারপরে in view of the philosophers of the future and he marks said she of the quote that I'm sure I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say বেশি করে পারবো তো কথা হচ্ছে এই বলছে যে লোকটা বলছে ঠিক আছে এই তো ওইখানে লাফিয়ে দেখাও না পারো কি না সেইগুলো আমরা যারা হিউম্যানিটি পড়াই তারা বোঝবার চেষ্টা করি কাজে আপনার প্রশ্নটা অত্যন্ত ঠিক কিন্তু যদি আমি ঠিক বলবো আমি ভুল করবো না এটা একদম কিছু মনে করবেন না এখানে যারা পুরুষ মানুষ আছে এবং আমি শেষেও ঠিক মতো করে ব্যবসা করতে পারবো না কিন্তু তারা আসছ বা করে তারা আমাকে ক্ষমা করে দিও কিন্তু এটা নিয়ে যদি এগোতে পারো তো এই হচ্ছে এই হচ্ছে অসম্ভব নাম করা গণিতবিদ তিনি করেন তিনি এসেছিলেন আমি একটা ক্লাস করিয়েছিলাম একজন খুব নাম করা কেন আপনি নাম্বার থিওরি দিকে গেলেন সব ছেড়ে ছুড়ে দিয়ে তো তখন তিনি বলছেন যে দেখুন তার কারণ হচ্ছে যে এটাতে কারেক্ট হওয়া যায় সেই জন্য কিন্তু তারা কখনো কেন যাই হোক না কেন তার একটা ভদ্রলোক যে কি খুশি হলেন ওই তো মানে ইয়ে আছে কনফিডেন্স আছে সুতরাং ভয় পেলেন না আমার সেই কথাটাই আমি আপনাকে বলছি ঠিক আছে যে কারেক্ট হওয়ার নেশা ইজ নট এ গুড নেশা অনেক নেশা করেছি জীবনে কোনটা ভালো নেশা কোনটা খারাপ নেশা জানা আছে আমি 
very aware of what it's doing. You're telling the truth and winning an argument to Israel. I am going to go to the house. I am I'll accept it. Oh, I'll accept it. A good chocolate in Atoka, Nita Shock, not Obishish to Gobishok Hishabi. Is a stand in it in the Shunishit for a person. Idaning, who bought to put in his resin of Nash, they can have a moment of Jibon or Japon. Chamok brother Shashprash Nitsa Sapar of Kore, among the Rotona Chotri Sotri Nilbotum, or Chenibi, Medadik to Gobishanar, or Moro Mikol Punashoki. আমরা আরো দেখেছি তার ব্যতিক্রমী অনুসন্ধিৎ সুমানন যখন চলচ্চিত্র নির্দেশকের ভূমিকা অবতীর্ণ তখন তার নির্মিত ছায়াছবির ফ্রেমে পর ফ্রেমে উঠে আসছে আধা শহরের গঞ্জের নিম্নবর্গীয় প্রান্তবাসীদের তমসাকৃত জীবন কথা তার সিনেমায় আমরা বলতে পারি একভাবে দ্য সাবলটন সাসপেন্ট অগণিত সম্মানে ভূষিত হয়েছে পেয়েছেন ভারত সরকারের সাহিত্য একাডেমি পুরস্কার বর্তমান কালে বাংলা ভাষা শিল্প ও সংস্কৃতি চর্চার অগ্রগতি সে প্রাপ্ত বসু माननीय মন্ত্রী বিদ্যালয় ও উচ্চ শিক্ষা দপ্তর পশ্চিম সরকার এখন প্রদান করবেন তার ভাষণ Dr. Shati Guho, Director and Institute of Language Studies of Research, ISR and ISR Rane Kotha Bhagun Ganur Rachen, A. Shabakri Postit Vishishto Shikhabit, Eko Mutha Bhagera, Priyo Chhatru Chhatrira, Postimong Rajya Uccho Shikha Shongshat, Taradhikari Kamon Gormila, Onrano Amadet Doktor Edwinno Shakhar, Jaradhikari, Officer Raja Rachen, Onrano Vishishto Shikhabindo, আজকে উদ্ধব উদ্ধবক গায়ত্রী চক্রবর্তী বিভাগ তাকে তো বটে এবং আর যারা এখানে আছেন এবং ছাত্রছাত্রীদের আমি উষ্ণ অভিনন্দন জানাচ্ছি আমার ভাবতে ভালো লাগছে ইনস্টিটিউট অফ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ স্টাডিজ এন্ড রিসার্চ আইএলএসআর কলকাতা যে সুমিতি কুমার চট্টোপাধ্যায় সারক বক্তৃতা আয়োজন করেছে তার প্রথম there are some on the Purga, that's only King Dajituna, that Purisha and Udun Kuradoa, become the first to the house. Amade, a Pasha Bong Shows to the Torta Gavishuna, a Ilesa Recta, Kui, Mutun Turiha, are at a Gruni Purishan. Amade Manadi and Kondi, Smoothie Mondo on the Pulichinen, Amada Shakosa Pulichinam, Evon Utsikal, the Rutin Ilesa, Amra Pushito Veche. বিশ্বজনীন সংস্কৃতি সৌভাত্রে গবেষণা এবং প্রসারের লক্ষ্যে আমাদের বলতে ভালো লাগছে যে আচার্য সুমিতি কুমার চট্টোপাধ্যায়ের মতো একজন বহু ভাষাবিদ এবং বহুমুখী প্রতিভার মানুষের উত্তরাধিকার তার নামে এই সংস্থা আমরা করতে পেরেছি এটা আমাদের গর্ব ওডিপিএর মতো বই যেটা গায়ে যদি এখনই তাই একটা মনোভাব আলোচনা করেছেন সেটা আমাদের অতি তার বর্তমানকে একসঙ্গে মিলিয়ে দিয়েছে আমার মনে করি সুনীতি কুমারের মতো যারা বাংলা বাঙালি ভাষা এবং সংস্কৃতি চর্চার ক্ষেত্রে সমৃদ্ধ করেছিলেন তাদের অলক সম্মান প্রতিভা এবং কাজের প্রতি আমরা একটা শ্রদ্ধা জ্ঞাপন করার চেষ্টা করেছি এই আইরেসারের বক্তৃতা মালার মধ্যে সেখানে গায়ত্রী দিকে আমরা পেয়েছি গায়ত্রী দিয়ে ফোন করলেন অনেক প্রশ্ন উত্তর নিলেন কথাবার্তা হলো অনেক কম বয়সী ছেলে মেয়েরা প্রশ্ন করলেন সেটা খুবই আমাদের জন্য খুব ভালো হলো আমি I was able to 
संस्कृति विषय निरंतर अनुसंधान एवं गवेषण प्राणित कर संस्कृति सम्पर्क दर्शनिकोसफिकलिगेशन गायत्री <laughs> दरकार <laughs> महान कवि लेखक के विश्वमान उन्नत कर सत्य सांगला हल एक भाषा भाषागत दर्शन सारा पृथ्वी दरकार प्रणाम नमस्कार